In this video, we are going to analyze functions and graphs. Let's begin. So analyzing functions, we can analyze parts of a function by describing them as increasing or going up, or oops, increase ing without the e, or decreasing, which is uh, going down, decreasing, and also as linear, which is whether or not it's a straight line, and nonlinear which is uh, if it's not linear, if it's not a straight line. So if we look at this function over here, between x, is x equals 0 and x equals 4, so between this portion, uh, let's use uh, yellow, between uh, here and here, so just this portion of the graph, so you kind of want to just stop there. So you want to almost like just completely block this portion out and just look at this portion. So between 0 and 4, is it increasing or decreasing? Well, we're going up. It goes from 2 to 7, so that is increasing. And is it linear or nonlinear? Well, it is a curved line, so that would be nonlinear. So let's erase that. Let's look at the other side between 4 and 8. So between 4 and 8, so now we're looking at this portion right here. Between 4 and 8, is that linear or, sorry, increasing or decreasing? Well, we're going from 7, starts up here, starts at 7, and goes down over here, which is 2. So it's from 7 to 2, that is a decrease, so decreasing. Decreasing and is it linear or nonlinear? It is a curve, so it is nonlinear. Remember, linear just means it is a straight line, and that is not a straight line. So let's look at some distance and time graphs when we're analyzing distance and time graphs. A distance versus time graph shows us how far two objects are from one another. Consider the following types of lines on a distance versus time graph would represent what the following of <laughs> types of line on a distance versus time graph would represent. So in our first graph, we start at, you know, let's say that's home, the beginning, and we are going away from home over time. So we would say this object, object, whatever it is, whether it be a person or a thing, is moving away. So moving away from the starting point or from home at a constant speed, at constant speed. Now, how do we know it's a constant speed? It's because it is a straight line. What's not a constant speed? A non-constant speed would be like a curve. Like this would be decelerating. This would be accelerating because it starts off not steep and then gets steeper and steeper. So a straight line means it is a constant speed. Straight line, constant speed. All right, let's look at B. You have an object starting away, and it goes back toward, like, the beginning, or toward home, or toward uh, your starting point. So you would say object is moving closer. Object moving closer. Closer at constant speed. Again, constant speed because it is a straight line, so it is linear. And finally, C, which is this one right here. An object, notice, over time, as time goes on, the distance does not change. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down, so that means the distance is not changing. Object, we say object is at rest. Object. at rest. Or you could also say not changing distance, whichever one makes most sense to you. It's not changing its distance. Below, we have accelerating and decelerating. So this is accelerating. D is because it starts off 
flatter. Remember, flat means not changing, um, the distance is not increasing very much. But, um, so notice it kind of starts off flatter and then it gets steeper. If it starts off flatter, that means it's slow. If it ends up flatter, that means it gets slow. So to start off slower and to get faster means you are accelerating. So accelerating, colon, object increasing speed. Object, and it's moving away at increasing speed. Moving away at increasing speed, increasing at increasing rate or speed. And then the other one is, so that is accelerating. If you look at E, it starts off really steep and then it starts flattening. So if it starts off steep and flattens, because if the, it starts flattening later, that means later on, if it starts off, uh, that if it's flattening later, it means it starts stopping later. That means it's slowing down. So we would call this decelerating. Hopefully uh, I spelled it correctly. It's decelerating. And we would say specifically the object, again, moving away. At, uh, at a decreasing speed. Because it starts off fast, and then it's slowing down. <laughs> All right, let's look at the next section. So match each distance versus time graph with the correct description. So Kaylee got on the bus at her house. The bus made two more stops before it arrived at school. So it should stop twice. This one does not stop twice. Uh, so she l gets on the bus and it leaves away from her house and it stops once and it stops twice and then it gets to school. Does this make sense? No, this means that it should be going back home. So this would be A. Let's look at B. Brennan and his dad left for school in his dad's car. They got, uh, they got stopped on the train tracks for several minutes, so that means it should flatten out over there before they were able to continue to school. So they left for school, then they got stopped for, by train tracks for several minutes, and then they were able to continue to school. Oh, yeah, there you go. So that should be B because this one should indicate some kind of like going back home. See, Cameron left for school with his mom, but remembered he left his English project at home. She took him back home. So went for school, but remembered he's left his English project at home. So she went back and then they headed back to school without any stops. Look at this, going back to school, no stops. That is C. All right, let's take a look at number two. Create a distance versus time graph showing Adam's distance from his house. Label each segment of the graph. Adam left his friend, his, uh, friend Brody's house and started walking home. So if he left his friend Brody's house, starts walking home, uh, let's assume that the house is the very bottom. So he left his friend Brody's house, um, which means it should be... Uh -oh. I'm in trouble here, means that it should be going, let's assume the house is right here. So it should be going down. And this is uh, our first portion. So this is A, let's label that as A. And then he started walking home. So as you know, he's uh, walking home. So the distance toward home should be decreasing. Um, like he should be going toward the bottom, which is where home is. He realized he left his phone at Brody, so he turned around to get it. Do not go like this because that means he's going back in time. So if he uh, realized he's left his phone at Brody, so he turned around to get it, he has to go back up. So this is uh, actually, let's do probably go like this. This is A and this is B. So he goes back to his friend Brody ho Brody's house. So notice I don't go way past it because his Brody, we assumed, lives over here. So he should stop right there as well. So he left uh, at Brody's house and then he does that. And then see, he left Brody's house a second time and started to walk home. Um, 
and then he stopped halfway to talk to a friend as he passed. So he goes down, and then he says stopped halfway. So halfway is, if this is a whole way, halfway should be around here. Stop halfway to talk, which means he does not change distance. It goes flat. So this is C, and this is D because he's talking. And then E says, Adam then quickly ran home to make it in time for dinner. Um, he quickly ran home. That means he can't do like a general thing. It needs to be pretty sharp. It needs to be like pretty steep. So that would be E. And he makes it home, which is the very bottom. So your graph should look something like that. All right. Try that for number three. You're doing a distance first time graph showing Vanessa's distance from her house. Label each segment of the graph. So Vanessa left her house and ran at a steady jogging pace. So her house, again, we're, start, we're assuming that's the bottom. So let's go ahead and use a different color. So uh, left her house, started to run at a steady jog. You know what? Before I start draw that line, I'm going to read the second one to see what happens next. Vanessa increased her speed, but about halfway got a leg cramp. So she left her house and started steady, that means a straight line, and that's gonna be A. And then she increased her speed. Does that mean it goes like this? Or does it mean it goes like that? Well, if she increases her speed, that means it should gradually get faster. So kind of goes like that, kind of. Now, that's probably not the best way because it like she goes steady and then she slows down and speeds up. So it's probably not the best representation. If I were to do this again, um, I might even say, you know what, if she increases her speed about halfway to get a leg, actually, you know, increasing her speed just means the line should get steeper. And there we go. It gets steeper. But then halfway, she got a leg cramp, which means it should probably stop. And then C, Vanessa sat down and stopped to stretch. So there you go. Here we go, she sits down, stops to stretch, and then she decides to turn around and walk back home at a much slower pace, which means after stopping, she kind of slowly gets back. So this is B, she speeds up, and C, she stops, D, she slowly walks back. So, uh, I messed up with the curve earlier because increased her speed made me think, oh, she's accelerating, but that's not necessarily the case. It just said she increased her speed. So we go from steep to even more steep. That almost looks like it's straight up and down line. So let's try that again. So it goes like this, and then it gets uh, steeper, and then she gets a cramp, and then she slowly walks back home. So this would be A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. All right, let's do number four. Sorry about the confusion right there. Four, the graph sh below shows Justin's distance from his house as he walks to school. Interpret what do you think happened to each segment of the graph. There are different answers you can come to with this. So distance from his house, so you could say Justin, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to say he walks to school at steady pace at steady pace, steady, at a steady rate or steady pace. So that's A. And then for B, it's like right over here. And then right there, it starts to change. So at B, uh, he stops. Who knows why he stops? Maybe to pick flowers, maybe to talk to a friend. Who knows? And finally, C, he increases his speed. He accelerates so gradually increases his speed to school and that's it so now we understand how to uh, uh, read distance first time graphs and also how to analyze a function remember functions increasing or decreasing, linear or nonlinear. And distance and time graphs, there are a lot of ways to look at it. They can be accelerating, sorry, at a constant rate, constant rate uh, back home or back to the original starting point. No movement or no motion, stopping. This is accelerating and this is decelerating. And we know how to put those to stories. Go ahead and try some problems on your own.